Hey, Chakra. How you doing? good that's good that you're doing fine today we got a four foot tall chocolate bunny for easter damn that's awesome my friend shared with me a game called Content Warning. I think he wants me and my brother to play it with him tonight. It's uh, it's free right now, actually. It's a free game. A free multiplayer game, but only for today. I got the head. Nice. Landfall April Fool's Game Jam. Yeah. Just finished dinner. Nice. I also just finished dinner. I... I tried something new. And... I remember in Food Wars that they used orange juice in some of their meals. When it came to, like, sauces and stuff. So, I took a quarter cup uh, well, not a quarter cup, a third cup, one third, of orange juice, uh, put that in a bowl, then I put barbecue sauce in there, I whisked it together, Bosco's Food Wars, yeah, I read the whole manga, uh, I whisked it all together until the orange juice was completely gone, it was just barbecue sauce with orange mixed in. And then I put in Italian herb and spice along with pepper. And then I put three pork chops in it, let it marinate in the fridge for uh, from 11 to 4. Then at 4, I went to the fridge, I cut them up into cubes, and then put them all back in there while mixing it up with my hands like really getting in there and then i left it again for another hour well no i left it in there for an hour and a half and then i cooked it again and like then i cooked it <clears throat> it actually was pretty good not gonna lie There was still that peppery kick in there that was very much needed and appreciated. But um, it really helped balance out the barbecue sauce. And I, I thought it was just good. I thought it was good. Food Wars has genuine cool cooking tips. Oh, the manga does too. Like, uh, each chap, each endpoint of the mon, like each end chapter of the manga. Uh, if they cook food in that chapter, he, the author, gives the full step by step recipe on how to make it, and I thought that was pretty cool. It's why I got a little bit more experimental with my cooking. Okay, but why, 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 why are we here? Why are we here? What are we doing? What are we doing? There is a term I really fucking hate hearing uh, from a certain demographic, the one that Mass reported me, because then I quote, y'all a bunch of stinky bitches that don't leave your homes. I don't want them changing 40k. I don't want them changing it.
they never refer to what that change is and then when they try all it is is an addition it's not a change i know i know this is a really stupid and beat to death topic but as an example female marines they scream that it's a fucking change to the lore no it's not it does not what would be a change is a retcon a retcon already exists as a word to be used retconning is when you change one piece of information and replace it with another i.e what they think is going to happen you introduce female marines all the marines are female Loken's, Loken has tits, uh, Abaddon has tits, all of them. That's not what anyone is talking about. That's a retcon. You fucking troglodytes. In addition to a story is not a change to that story. It is additional information being presented. Now, a lot of people will go, but isn't that still change? No. The story has not fundamentally changed. Dragon Ball introduced the Super Saiyan. The Super Saiyan transformation was hinted at and added in by the Planet Namek Saga. But it was built up and established within the lore. It was an addition and a transformation that Goku can achieve when put through intense amounts of stress and rage. However, that was not a retcon. That was not a change. That was information presented to us and given to us. It did not fundamentally change the story of Dragon Ball, it was an addition to Dragon Ball. <clears throat> and here's something else that I need people to understand very clearly about a series like Warhammer 40k, D&D, Magic the Gathering, what the fuck ever. Retcons have been have inherently been with all these fucking series for years and y'all had no fucking problems with it until a black person or a gay person was involved forty k has retconned itself more than once because things didn't add up or hey we didn't want this one faction to steamroll. Gullyman coming back is not a change to the lore. It is an event that happened in the lore, but it is not a fundamental change to 40k. It's not even a change at all. It's just, oh, a Primarch is here now. The game is different. different in a way that is not change they haven't retconned who gullyman is they haven't retconned anything or changed who he is fundamentally they took gullyman from 30k and put him in 40k and now he has to live with the fact that he has a 30k mindset in the realm of 40k again not a retcon not a change now a lot of people are going to be like Oh, but they, but they, uh, 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 but, uh, they changed things. It was the fucking, ah, oh, what's the term? They changed the stakes. Cool. Has that fundamentally changed the lore? No, 40k is still and continues to be horrifically grimdark. Unless they are going back and retconning information and making an absolute change saying, Nope! This is how it has always been! That's a change. That's a retcon. But at no point in recent memory has 40k done that. 
They did it all the fucking time back in 7th edition and beyond, like, and before. The stakes always change in stories. Exactly. Additions and inclusions into a story do not change that story. They do not. They add onto the story. Is it sometimes good to add in things? Is it sometimes bad to add in things? Yes, both can be true at the same time. I.e., was it good for the Imperial Guard to have a tank commander like Pask? For like the longest time they had him. Yes, it was a very interesting idea to add into the game and the story. Did the Ultramarines need a fucking tank commander of their own? I don't remember anyone ever running Sergeant Cronus. So I'm going to assume that's a no. No one liked that one. AKA the reason for the town not being the good guys anymore. Was the town mind control a retcon? Here's the thing that 40k has masterfully done that not a lot of other people can do. 40k is written like we are reading records from their universe. We are reading interactable records from their universe. It's like you're an agent of the Inquisition and you are researching something i.e. Uh, those white space marine battle books on my shelf there. They are written like you were reading a tactical report from a space marine. <clears throat> so the Tal mind control, cleverly, it looks like a retcon. It does look like a retcon. However, GW masterfully well, GW's writers, masterfully, <clears throat> slap, made it, made it so that way any new information we learn from any faction in 40k is never a retcon. Because as they put it, things change with new information. Well, that eh. wrong wording. Things are added onto with new information, i.e. proper context. We recently learned that the Tau Ethereals have pheromones that they use to guide their population. However, however, you have to remember, this is from an Imperial report, i.e. remember, all of this is written from the perspective of an Imperial agent. So, do the Tau brainwash their people with pheromones? Probably. There's probably a hint of truth in there. But, it could also not be true. You see what they did there? They can just choose to have information and choose not to have it whenever they want. Because you want to know why? 40k is not a small world scale story. It is not a story with character A goes to beat up character B. It is a galaxy spanning universe with galactic consequences for actions taken by factions within that universe. And a lot of information on a galactic scale can be easily found and easily lost. Look at our own real world for a perspective on that. How much information do we not have on ancient civilizations because someone didn't write it down or someone burnt it to the ground? As an example, the Nazis burnt down one of the very few places that actually studied transgenderism and other things related to that topic. We lost decades of research to that stupid fucking ignorant bullshit. As an example. 
information does not fundamentally change the story when we learned about gravity did that stop gravity did gravity change no we understood gravity we understood that the planet spins and that creates a gravitational force that is a very basic explanation don't come at me wasn't that the first book burning that specific one i think it was either way the reason why i'm saying all of this is because the toxic parts of any community are saying we don't want change we don't want the property to change at all in addition is not a change what changes for 40k is the rules i.e the gameplay rules because they have to change to keep the game interesting to keep people invested and playing which means that they have to change the rules to make them more accessible to a broader audience so they can keep making the money and last time i checked gw is doing perfectly fine god i fucking wish they would drop the prices god i wish but they're doing fine And what doesn't change about the rules is Craft World Eldar is being annoying. <sighs> why, why do you have Toughness 7, Wraithguard? Why? Why do you have such tough models in an army that doesn't fucking need them? Why? My brain is still confused. But again... These aren't changes, these are additions. These are adding on to it. But including gay characters is changing it. No, it's not. It is not changing anything. Gay people, my no gay people, people with different skin colors, people with different beliefs, and everything exists in our world. 40k is a sci-fi fantasy space opera and it can have whatever the fuck it wants in it we have fucking we have fucking trans human space marines creatures made from the warp that don't even see themselves as human who, scientifically speaking, every doctor that has looked at 40k has looked at what a space marine is and the organs that make them work and go, yeah, no, that ain't science, that's fucking voodoo, that's bullshit. I think you can suspend your disbelief just a tiny bit, just a little bit, that Susie is a trans girl. Just saying, you can fucking do it. And no one at any point has made any story solely about that in 40k. They are either just natural things that are spoken in dialogue, i.e. me and my wife, i.e. you know, like me and my husband have to get to the evac point, or me and my wife have to get to the evac point. Me and my partner have to get to the evac point. It's natural conversation. And it's not anyone's problem if you have a problem with that. That's a you thing. That's a you problem. At the end of the day. And here's something, there is times where 40k did change, where they did retcon shit. I.e. the unpopular shit that no one liked.
Furious Abyss pretty much retconned out of the Horus Heresy entirely. That entire book where it is like reading modern 40k characters in the Horus Heresy, which is fucking annoying, pretty much retconned out of the entire story. Or did it make sense? Yeah. Furious Abyss, gone. The whole fucking plot of that book is a soup was like they got like the forces of chaos they got their own super star destroyer betrayer which is like 11 books later basically said oh no that wasn't the only there was like six more and they were all super fucking scary w what do you mean furious abyss that ship didn't exist there's a change but a change no one gave a shit gave a shit about because it was Furious Abyss. It was the worst Horus Heresy story agreed on by a good amount of people. Then there's Fulgrim. Fulgrim was trapped in a painting by the end of his book. Not the demon, Fulgrim. His soul was trapped in a painting. Merrick Cracked comes out, retcons the whole thing that the demon was put in there by Fulgrim because Fulgrim fully gave in to Slanesh. That's a retcon. And a really stupid one. I.e., yeah, 40k has changed. It has changed a lot. And you were fine with it then, so why are you bitching about it now? Oh, I know exactly why. I know exactly why these people are bitching about it. I know exactly why. It's because they're racist, homophobic, and sexist. And I'm not saying that to be hyperbolic. The second you put pressure on any one of them, any one of them, they go mask off. It is not even a fucking contest. Sup, boss man? Perturabo next. Return in Demon Primark? Yes. Nope, I want Fulgrim first. I want Slanesh. I want the Emperor's Children and Slanesh to get their fucking love. And then we can start worrying about Primarchs of Undivided. I want, I want Jagatide Khan, and I want Fulgrim. Those are the next two Primarchs I want. I will hear fucking none of it. Perturab was too busy sitting on his throne bitching about how Rogaldorn likes lemons, like the little citrus bitch that he is, while he is sitting there enjoying an orange. He is too busy doing that. Yeah, this topic is non-existent for them. Guys, trust me. The Imperium does not care. It is... Damn it, I was hoping for some rage. Nah, blood. Nah, blood. Uh, I, I am I am the person that brings the rage. I'm the fucker who got mass reported because, and I quote, hey, maybe we should treat these toxic little shits like we treat Leandros. Plus, I'm in too good of a mood. I got fucking monetized today. I'm so fucking happy. Let's fucking go, bro. Yes. Oh my god. Um, uh, and I posted the Drakari, like, Blue Sky actually got its, uh, hashtags to start working. I am absolutely fucking happy. And a lot of people are like, oh, you're so small. Dude, I don't care. Seeing my fucking view count go from, like, 133 in Battalion Wars 2, uh, 570 on World Eaters, and then just jumping up to 1,768. Fuck, that's a good feeling. It's a fleeting feeling, I can tell you that much. How's the missus? They're doing good. Boss got monetized. Yeah! Fucking cheer, mates! Please still donate, though. Remember, $1,000 by the end of the month, I'll review Persona. I will actually dip my balls into Persona. Except it won't be my balls, because all those characters are underage. Please, for the love of God, Atlas, stop sexying up teenagers. 
I don't need this shit in my life. Also, stop trying to make incest cool. I don't care if we're not related. If we're brother and sister, we're brother and sister. Distant fucking bar where I felt like I was trying to chase it and it was just constantly going further and further away. And it can get exhausting. It got tiring. And some days I was just sitting at my desk, annoyed, tired, not wanting to work, but having to work. Your stance from JoJo. <laughs> But yeah, uh, we're at one dollar nine. We're at how much right now? Uh... Yeah, five, nine, ten. We are currently at ten dollars. Do what you want because a pirate is free. Yeah. Do what you want because a pirate is free. Oh boy, I'm not excited for when it comes tonight. Holy shit. Um, I'm gonna say this right now. Knights are the most boring army in my opinion. Does that mean they're a bad army? No, it does not. Do you, if you enjoy knights, does that mean you're a boring person? No. Knights are incredibly fantastic looking models. But I can only stomach uh, make about five models worth of the same bullshit each and every time. Knights are a very much one trick pony. They either shoot everything off the board or they're dead. Or they tank shock everything off the board or they're dead. They're boring. Their play style is... Incredibly tiring. God damn, do I not like knights. <laughs> but... 
to anyone playing 40k or any newcomers to 40k the thought of wait i only have to deal with like a handful of models like i only have like four or five models on the table or ten that sounds fucking amazing to some people and again no flack for anyone that wants to play knights i just personally find them boring i just personally find them boring but again they're a very appealing army little model count so you don't have to stress about like each individual model they're all he like they're all very tough units and they hit extremely fucking hard but All you fucking do is hang out in the back like Tau Empire and fire. Or you're just trying to close the distance while I'm pelting you with fucking firepower. And it's boring. Because once that big model is off the table, there's like maybe three or two left that are horribly crippled. And you can't really play the game at that point. And it's really depressing watching a night player lose all of their fucking steam. It, it, like, I, I have watched night players... I have watched night players just lose, like, their fucking... What's that night called again? Hold on. Warhammer downloads... Knights, where are you? I'm gonna have to study you soon anyway. You're my next fucking video. After Space Marine. If they lose, like, their Knight Castle or Knight Valiant, that's game at that point. They're fucked. They got nothing. It's strange and awesome how Warhammer was referenced in South Park. It wasn't referenced. They straight up played the fucking game. Making fun of people like Andrew fucking Tate while doing it which is great but then again south park ruined our fucking sensibilities so like you get half points yeah no like knights i can see why a lot of people go for them i have a few knights myself but goddamn, they're boring. This is this is brain dead. This is brain dead tactics. All I gotta worry about is fucking one model or like five models doing their job. And hope to god they don't get blown the fuck up. <laughs> Which there's plenty of stuff in 40k that looks at knights now and goes, Baba Booey. Not sisters, though. Sisters going up against knights is a fucking nightmare. Because we, we, we don't have any anti-tank guns. Because for some reason, some shithead at GW decided... Demelte Strength 9 skill. Without the ability to make their guns stronger. At least they didn't play Ultra Smurfs, the most boring faction. I will f fuck you up. I play Ultramarines! I play Ultramarines! I'm boring! <laughs> I play hyper-aggressive Ultramarines! I got a lot more going on than Knights, I can tell you that, I can tell you that much. I'm fucking boring! But at least I'm more interesting than Knights! Yeah, like 2,000 points, you're including like two knights and an armager. Wait, no, I'm bad at math. Hold on. Calculator. 
At a thousand points, you're including... Four hundred plus four two five, then plus one hell brain nine sixty five. No, knights are pretty much just the easy, like that was easy button for like low point games but then when the second you get past a thousand points it's a nightmare for knights because like everybody's going for board control knights have very shitty board control so they just want to start killing everything in front of them but then like their opponents playing to the board they're playing advantage the knights can't catch up knights will always lose to board control that's why i prefer chaos knights we get Five different, oh, eight, five different armagers. Ooh, you get five. You get five variants of lamer dreadnoughts. <laughs> Let's look at them, shall we? You get the War Dog Executioner. It's just a fucking Space Marine Redemptor, and it gets plus one to hit if it's below strength. The War Dog Stalker. Again, just the Redemptor with a minigun. War Dog Carnivore, again, the Redemptor, but melee focused. <laughs> I'm tearing you. I'm tearing knights apart. I'm doing it. Knights, again, are incredibly boring. But again, to me. They are boring to me. And you could take my opinion with a grain of salt. I unironically play Ultramarines. That music change was perfect. Me in the corner with Tyranids. Why are you in the corner? Get out here. We need more fucking Tyranid players. God damn. It is a fucking tragedy what happens with Tyranids half the fucking time. Half the fucking time, Tyranids, like, they come out strong. They come out the gate fucking strong. And then, what up, Dave? The book. Where am I at C tier? One fucking change to anything that Tyranids has, and it's just downhill from there. It They are the fucking... Tyranids are fucking... Ah! What's the fucking Yu-Gi-Oh deck where it's just, god damn it, every time? Cyber Dragons. Anytime Cyber Dragon gets something good, immediately smack the fuck down the next update. Or immediately the week after. It is... It is fucking depressing, bud. You and me are gonna have a problem, ain't we? What? Why are we having a problem? <laughs> why, why, why do you think we're having a problem here? I... Listen. I get roasted on constantly because I'm an Ultramarine player. I get fucking dunked on constantly because I'm a space marine player. I, I get, like... <laughs> I can dish it out back. <laughs> but again, at no point am I going to say that you were a boring person for playing knights. Sometimes it's fun to be brain dead. I play world eaters. I have a world eaters army. You want to talk about fucking brain dead when it comes to an army? What do world eaters do? What the fuck do world eaters do? That's a nice face. Be a shame if a chain axe came up to it. That's all the army is. That's all we are. Melee, that's it. Nothing else. Shoot, what's that? Psychic fucking nerd shit. Punch it. Get to it. Smack it hard. You all better watch out. I'm turning I'm turning right and I don't wanna smack you with my fucking glaive, dude. A regular real life deities, minor warp gods, because I wonder how much power the Christian god or Thor has, probably none at all. Uh if they had any power, it's long since gone. 
It is confirmed in the Horus Heresy that um, uh, those gods did exist. But they were either minor variations of Korn, Zine, Schnurdle, or Slanesh. Or they were their own thing, but eventually, just like in Sandman, like DC Sandman, uh, they faded away when, like, they stopped being worshipped entirely. Don't worry, I actually enjoy your content because you were calling my nights boring. But they are, at the end of the day. What's more interesting, a varied army that backs each other up and has multiple degrees of complexity and strategy to their to their gameplay style or big boy go we they are boring because it's just big boy go we now again i'm not saying that can't be fun but to me it's not mentally stimulating enough to keep my interest in that army And when all you got going for you is big number and big model, when other armies can do it too, I don't know what to tell you. My next army is more interesting. Leagues of Votan. Oh, Leagues. Leagues of Votan. God damn. Has 10th edition not been kind to them? I have not seen anything. Anyone play fucking Leagues of Votan? And I want to see Leagues of Votan! I have not played against Leagues of Votan, and I want to play against them! But god damn it, does their army ability suck ass! Hold on, I'm reading something. You were that original unit of two units combined to form a single large unit, neither of the units had judgment. Oh, this is a this is a thing countering like Gene Steeler cults and Chaos cult cultists. Okay. Uh, if your army faction leaves the Votan each time an enemy unit destroys the League of Votan unit from your army. Oh no, they did change it. They did change it. Thank you. Christ, they changed it. Holy fuck. Is it permanent? Is it permanent? Oh my god, they fixed it. Oh my god, they fixed this. Holy shit. I haven't been able to look at Leagues of Ota in a while, but holy fuck, that fixed a lot of fucking problems they had. Before it was, they just gave out a token, and by the end of the turn, that token was gone. Now it's, if they destroy a unit, that goes in the book, bruh. Permanently. Stacks up to two, but uh, if you get two pain tokens, if you get two grudge tokens on you, God damn, you better hope they have poor fucking rolling that day. Because uh, they add one to the hit and add one to the wound roll. Most armies would kill for that. God knows I would. As a world leader, getting plus one to wound? Are you kidding me? Fuck, that'd be amazing. Do you like any anti-heroes at all or no? Because I think there's a spectrum of it. Anti-heroes are dumb. They're just heroes, but edge. They're just heroes that are willing to kill. I'm sorry, guys. You will never convince me that Shadow the Hedgehog is a bad guy. Or could potentially become a bad guy. He's a hedgehog with a fucking, fucking depression problem. 
like Venom. Venom was a villain that became a hero. He's not an anti-hero. He's just a hero with issues now. Oh boy, here we go with anti-heroes again. If all you got is Edge, you're a fucking Edge Lord. You're not an anti-hero. You're a hero with an Edge complex. I could cut myself by just staring at half of them. Dear God. <laughs> I understand. I... Punisher? Punisher has never once called himself a hero. Marvel continues to describe him as a violent vigilante. That is not a hero. A lot of people in the story that he saves, they do describe him as a hero, but he himself does not. You want a hero? Go look at Captain America. Now would you excuse me? I'm gonna go bludgeon this guy to death with a fucking brick. Because he had the gall to steal bread. What do you define as edgy lord? What do I define as edgy lord? There's a lot. There's a lot. Um... It is hard to explain, but it is just something I know it when I see it kind of a thing. Like, Venom. Venom is edge. He's black, he's got shark teeth, all that kind of stuff. And his backstory is like he's a tortured soul, that kind of thing. That's edgy. Now, I'm not saying edgy can't be good. I'm just saying it's fucking annoying at this point because no one knows how to write dark characters correctly. The reason, like, there's a difference when it comes to, like, certain characters. Um... Again, Sandman. Sandman is an incredibly complex character with incredibly complex and dark themes around him. But that was because he was a horror character. He was a character from a horror story. He's going to be dark and complex. And yeah, a lot of people will see like dark, complex as edgy. Can't stop them from thinking that. Edgy is when you go out of your way to make your character's life so fucking miserable and that they act like this all the time. I'm in the corner. Because my parents are dead. And I it, I was trained in, like, the super art of being an edgelord. That kind of shit. That is annoyingly edgy. Like, the fucking most isekai characters. Characters. Where it's, like, when it's just them doing their thing, fuck. Kirito, best example of it. Fuck Kirito and all the edgelords like him. I'd love to see a villain think mob boss style who uses Ericsson's stages to justify their prep. What? Hold on. Ericsson's stages. Infancy, toddler, preschooler, adult. Stages of development? We'll see after before the night is over. After? This is just a... Uh... It's just a theory. I will see anger before the night is over. I'm in an incredibly good mood. You're not gonna get anger out of this. I'm sorry. I'm just in... Incredibly in a good mood. Like, I, I, I have been in this mood all day, and I've been smiling, I've been in a good mood. I'm wearing pajamas today. That's how fucking happy I am. I am so relaxed that I sat in pajamas all day, 
and wasn't even bothered in inkling by it. I am that happy. And I stopped by Lasgar, uh, Lasgar stream today. G gave my boy a little bit of a shout out, a little bit of a, little bit of a pep talk. Told his audience, hey, 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 subscribe to this motherfucker. He's beautiful. Which, by the way, after this stream, you go to Lasgar's channel there on YouTube, you go to his Twitch, you like and follow that motherfucker, okay? You understand me? You give that man a kiss from me. Ross will be the next loyalist to return after Grilly Man. Probably, I wouldn't be surprised by it. Space Wolves are a popular Space Marine army. It would not surprise me if they brought back, if they brought him back. It would not. But at the same time, I would prefer Jagatai and I prefer Fulcrum. Well, since we only had one Loyalist Primarch so far. Yeah, and again, like, are they going to release all the Primarchs eventually? Probably. They're good sellers. Yeah, I was usually in, like, double demon Primarchs for, like, every Loyalist Primarch so far. So, like, I want the next, I want the next demon Primarch to be Fulgrim. I want it to be the Prince of Pleasure. I would like that. Plus, Emperor's children do deserve their own model line. Like, how old is the Noise Marine? Nineteen ninety-one. Damn, that motherfucker be over thirty years old. That motherfucker's 33 years old! God damn! That fucker's got kids! We, that, that fucker needs a model update now! Jesus! Hey boss, congrats by the way. Thank you. I would also love to see Fulgrim return, but I also do like Pertron. Congrats, thank you! I I want a lot of things from 40k. Primarchs, yes, but I also want like unit updates as well. Like for Chaos Marines, I want the Chaos Bikers and the Noise Marines to be updated. Holy fuck, do they need updates badly? Their models are so fucking old. Dude, it's not even funny. Let me close some of these tabs. Hold on. Like, I go I go on the Games Workshop website. I want to see a sitcom for the Primarchs. Why? Why do you want that? Why do you want that? Lionel, did you drink my orange juice again? Well, you see, Gullyman, you left it out on the counter. So I thought it was everyone could have it. So I did. Ensue annoying laugh track that goes on for far too long. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, Chaos Cultist got a model update. Demon Prince got a model update. Chosen finally got their own models. Um, they still haven't released the Venom Crawler and Obliterators by themselves. Possessed got a model update. Sorcerer, Warpsmith, Dark Apostle, Chaos Lord. 
the Sorcerer and Terminator armor needs that update. Actually, Terminator Lord in general needs an update. Havoc's got an update. Yeah, bikes definitely that need that fucking update. Holy shit, it hurts me to look at them. Uh, Chaos Spawn. I feel like they could use an update. I feel like they could. Yeah. Uh, Defiler definitely needs a definitely needs a fucking update. Holy shit. Defiler definitely needs it. This thing is fucking terrible. Like, the Defiler's ugly. I'm just gonna say it. it it's an ugly-ass model. Raptors still hold up. Yeah, because Raptors were one of the first Chaos units to get upgraded. Like, all... All of recent Chaos follows the same kind of update thesis that Raptors followed. Raptors were the first one to get those model updates. Chaos Bunk is an update, but in the same breath, it's a pretty good universal old model. It is, it is at the end of the day, and it's why I could take it or leave it. I don't play spawn at all anyway. But yeah, like Defiler, Bikes, uh, Noise Marines definitely need a model update. Definitely need it. Uh, what other units, what other armies could use model updates? Yo, Demons, you got anything? Nah, no, Stanesh got a pretty beefy update. Nurgle also. Corn did too. I think they need to update the Flamers of Zinch models, but that's pretty much it. I think. Oh, Epidemius. I I I would like to see a new Epidemius model. Let's get let's get that boy some love. Tyranids could use a buff. All right, where are they? What 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 models are old as old as 1990 fucking one? Yeah, I think we could update the Hive Tyrant and the Tyranid Prime, including uh. I think we'd also update the Carnifexes and Raveners. Yeah, I think a lot of these models could use a design update. Swarmlord? Swarmlord, I want... He is supposed to be a Swarm Lord. Why is he not bigger than a Hive Tyrant? Just saying. Like, a lot of the, like, a lot of the new, newer tiered models make the older models look fucking bad, dude. It, it, it's not even a contest. Like the Trigon and the Moloch get a uh, get a pass because they were Forge World models that were turned into uh, regular 40k models because they were so popular. And yes, that's right. 40 uh, the Trigon and the Moloch were Forge World before they were regular. Uh, Drakari, what about you? Uh, Reavers and Hellions could use updates. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Ravers and Hellions, mostly of which Cabal stuff. Uh, what about Eldar? Oh, God, Eldar. Oh, God, how many of their models have been updated in fucking years? Like, uh, where are they? Where are they? They're fucking shining spears and regular bikes need to be updated. Um, where are they? Dire Avengers need a desperate update. Uh, their Warwalker needs update. Uh, their Wraith Lord needs an update. The Striking Scorpions definitely fucking need it. Swooping Hawks, Warp Spiders, and Fire Dragons desperately need a plastic kit. 
And bring the Shadow Spectres fucking over. Bring them fucking over. You did it with Tyranids. Do it with Eldar. It, I fucking hate Eldar. But... God damn, dude. Bring him over. Imperial Guard, what haven't you updated? Well, you did update a lot of your models. I think the Chimera... I think the Chimera could use an update. Hi. You scared me. Holy shit. No, you're good. I, I was lost in the sauce. Katachan Jungle Fighters? Please, for the love of God, I'm sick of looking at Buttface. I'm sick of looking at Buttface. Please. Please, I'm begging you. On all fours, GW. GW. Change this. For the love of God, please. Change this. I, 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 I don't... This is disgusting. Th this is this is a tragedy. This is this this this. this please, Just throw Catachan a bone. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger and his lads need it. Uh, Adeptus Custodes. They don't really need a model change because their thing, they've been around, like, they're still really new compared to a lot of other armies. Like, yeah, they got their start in Horus Heresy and then were brought over to 40k. But, like, a lot of their models are fine. When was the first Adaptus Custody, Adaptus Custody models made? Uh, when was Adeptus Custodes release 30k? Their recent models came out in 2018. So, Custodes, they're, they're fine. They are perfectly fine. They don't, they don't need a model update whatsoever. Agents of the Imperium, though, we gotta fucking talk. Why is there only one Inquisitor model? Like, one generic Inquisitor, and why does it look like ass? Why does it look like ass? This is the kind of shit you see in, like... This is old, dude. This is fucking old. I do not like this model. It is supposed to be just a Inquisitor. I would like more options for Inquisitor models, please. Just saying. Now, a lot of people are going to go, Oh, well, you can just make your own Inquisitor. Last time I did that, I got bitched at, so... The scheme at least looked decent. Ha! <laughs> ha, you think I care about ALS? <laughs> ah, but fine, I'll take a look. I think they're destruction? No, they're chaos, aren't they? Scaven or chaos now. The thing is, is that I don't know much about AOS, but a lot of these models look fucking old. Yeah, the rats could uh the rats could use some love. The rat the rats could use some love.
If we get a new Inquisitor, we better get Plastic Jacaro. You know what? No, I'll agree with that. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Give us Plastic Jacaro again. Fuck you. All right, and to uh, my to my Ultramarine uh, haters, guess what? I want an updated model of Kato Sicarius. Kato Sicarius has. Kato Sicarius has been through hell. He came out the other side a traumatized man, and he grew a beard. He grew a trauma beard. I want Trauma Beard Kato. Don't even have to make him a Primaris unit. I just want Traumatized Kato. Y'all can bitch at me all you want. You know I'm right. I, Kato Sicarius, will destroy this whole army all alone. He's no longer like that. Oh, boy. He's no longer like that. He got fucking humble bundled. He got humble bundled in the war. And he came out a traumatized scarred man. Hey, boss. What you think of the tiny Tyranids from the channel Idiotic Synergy? I don't know who that is. You mean Raveners? No, not Raveners. Rippers. They're called Rippers. I don't tend to watch a lot of that stuff. called Ripper Swarms. They've been around for like a long, long time. If y'all read the books, um, there's one where uh, Imperial Guard are being attacked by Tyranids on a winter planet, and the first group uh, of Ripper, like the first group of Tyranids land on the planet, they fucking die, so the Tyranids evolve, like the Tyranids changed out fur. So they can survive in the Arctic temperatures. And there's a fucking uh, fuzzy ripper swarm that gets into the base. And they kill one. And it's like a big fuzzy ball with teeth. What's up, Frostpan? Not much. Remember the barrel of monkeys you drop an Inquisitor and 128 Jacaro each arm with two weapons that can fire, slash, can multi multis, and all had a 2 plus and vulnerable save? That, that was before my time. I was 5th edition. I came into the game late fifth edition my first models were from fourth edition my first models were from fourth uh my first box set was black reach uh and i didn't start playing till the near tail end of fifth edition And then 6th edition came out and it was all downhill from there for me. Because I fucking do. You're from a time that I don't remember, but I'm from a time of fucking Helldrakes. Helldrakes were cancer. I was also there when the Allies chart existed. Y'all remember the Allies chart? Oh, none of you fucking do, so allow me to fucking... Allow me to bring that shit back to your fucking memory. Oh, who lives in a pineapple under the sea? This shit was cancer, man. So, back in 6th and 7th edition, they released this fucking atrocity. Dude, I'm 44. I started 3rd. Yeah, you're. that's out of my league. I, I have no idea. But yeah, this fucking abomination was 6th and 7th edition. This was their idea of combining two armies together, 
following strict rules. This chart sucked ass. So, what does this, what do these mean? If you were a white skull, you were battle brothers. Uh, you could have friendly commanders join uh, other armies units. You could have uh, friendly spellcasters cast uh, their magic on different units. Units, and you could have friendly units board friendly transports. So you could be seeing uh, fucking, fucking gray knights boarding. Uh, you could see fucking, uh, cause Storm Raven back then, Storm Raven was Blood Angel and Grey Knight only. You could see a squad of Black Templars board a Grey Knight ship. That's an example. Can't have that now. Uh, yellow was Allies of Convenience. I.e., you can have both armies together. There's no problems with it. They just can't benefit off each other. So you have two armies that play very differently working together. Blue was... You stand over there. It was desperate allies, i.e. if your units were within six of each other, you had to roll a d6 on a roll of a one. Those units sat there doing nothing. It was terrible. Then there was come the apocalypse, not before. They can't partner up, period. Fucking look at Tyranids, man. Look at fucking Tyranids, dude. No friends. No friends whatsoever. Hello, Darkness, my old friend, plays for this list constantly. But then, but then you see it out of the corner of your eye. There's Tau. Following that line, going up. Tau and Eldar are battle brothers? What's this? How get multiple brand new units that don't give a shit about positioning? And I can just cast spells to add one to their shooting, make them harder to hit, and just go fuck yourself, Mojo Jojo? I can just include a squad of Eldar Warlocks in a Tau army and tell you to go fuck yourself? The most toxic thing you could do back in 6th and 7th edition was Eldar Tau Alliance. You played that army? You played that army? You were seen as that guy? You were seen as the sweatiest fucking nerd that could ever exist? My brother played Tau and Eldar together. And then, and then, to their credit, to their credit, to their fucking credit, they tried to fix it in 7th edition. But Imperium was lumped into one faction. Imperium was lumped into one faction. And 7th edition is where they started introducing sub-factions. Tyranids. Darkness is still my only friend. Tau. For some reason, they are allies of convenience with Necrons. Orcs and Chaos, Space Marines, Allies of Convenience. I don't know how that works. <laughs> this was a band-aid on a flawed idea. And it did not help. The Allies Matrix just didn't work out. And then they tried to fix it with keywords. And you remember Garden Knights fam. And you saw how that turned out. What am I looking at?
look at this is cancer. Yes. <laughs> it was cancer. Everyone agreed with you. Even the people that were winning agreed with you. It's cancer. And now allies are simply, you can only bring this many points of a fellow army that shares the same keyword as you. So, Imperium can only bring Imperium, uh, but it's mostly just knights or agents of the Imperium. Uh, you can't include Space Marines with Sisters of Battle. You can't include Guard with Mechanicus. It's just knights and agents of the Imperium that can join in in any other Imperial faction. Uh, Chaos gets it a little bit better because uh, if you're Thousand Sons, you get access to Zinch. Um, if you're World Leaders, you get access to Corn Demons. If you're, Ner if you're Death Guard, you get access to Nurgle Demons. And that's about it. Unless you're Eldar, which in that case, you get access to Drukari and Harlequins and Yanari. If you're Tau, Necrons, Orcs, or Tyranids, tough shit. You get nothing. But then again, most people aren't bringing in those allied detachments unless it's Ancients of the Imperium or it's Harlequins for Eldar because goddamn... You don't get anything for bringing them. Uh, in fact, it's a detriment to your army to bring in those kinds of allies that don't synergize with them. Because if I bring, uh, if I'm playing Death Guard and I bring in Nurgle Demons, Nurgle Demons don't benefit from the Death Guard rule. They don't even get their own army ability. You just have Demons of Nurgle in a Death Guard army. You get their basic rules. That's it. Seems kind of fucking sad in retrospect. But you aren't sadder than Death Watch. Yo, how are those tournament places going anyway? Morgan Stats, what's going on? What's going on with you? Last week, Grand Tournament results. Ooh, Jeep's Dealer Cult's doing well. That's good. Death Watch, nowhere to be found. I'm speaking of cancer, Yu Gi Oh's given gimmick puppet support and now forgotten archetype can FTK. Hold on. Gimmick puppet support. Alright, let me take a look. New gimmick puppets. Okay, Gimmick Puppet Little Soldiers. Hold on, let me bring you guys with me over here. Alright, Gimmick Puppet Little Soldiers. What the fuck do you do? Uh, you can only use this card's effect. Only use the first effect of this card name once per turn. If this card is normal special summon, you can send one Gimmick Puppet monster with a different level from your deck to your graveyard. This card's level becomes upset monsters. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target up to two Gimmick Puppet monsters you control. Increase the levels by four. This is gar- this is garbage. Um, Gimmick Puppet Bloody Doll. You can only use the first and second effects of this card's name each once per turn. You cannot special summon from the extra deck the turn you activate this card's effect. Except Gimmick Puppet Monsters. This card's immediately discarded because it locks you into Gimmick Puppets. 
Uh, this card's in your hand. You can reveal one gimmick puppet XYZ monster in your extra deck. Special summon both one gimmick puppet monster from your deck with a level equal to the revealed monster's rank in this card. If this card is sent to the graveyard except from the hand, you can add it to your hand. Yeah, the problem is that she locks you into gimmick puppet. That's terrible. Uh, can still be negated, by the way. Uh, gimmick puppet cattle scream. You can only use the first effect of this card name once per turn. Uh, you can detach one material from your monster, especially some of this card from your hand or graveyard, but banish it with leaves the field. Okay. Uh, a gimmick puppet XYZ monster that has this card as material gains its effect once per turn. You start one month. Pose monster in your graveyard, special summon it to their field in defense position. Why are you giving your opponent a free resource? If you don't kill that monster. If you don't kill that monster, you're in deep shit, Woods. Alright, Gimmick Puppet. Fantastic Machina. You can detach one material from this card. Add one rank up magic spell from your deck to your hand. Also, during your main phase, you can normal summon one machine monster in addition to your normal summon slash set. If you special summon the Gimmick Puppet XYZ monster, you can special summon this card from your graveyard to either field in defense position. You can add one rank up magic spell from your graveyard to your hand. Then there's the rank up one. Uh, this card special summon, you can add one puppet trap from your deck to your hand. You would detach one material from this card, special summon one monster from either graveyard to your opponent's field in defense position. If a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target one of them, destroy it, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half its original attack. Target. This card's bad. Uh... Ah! Field spell! When this card resolves, you can add one gimmick puppet monster from your deck to your hand. Gimmick puppet monsters you control cannot be thrown in battle, so they are unaffected by your opponent's act activated non-XYZ monster effects. Cool, so they're still vulnerable to Zeus. Uh, once per turn, you can detach one XYZ, XYZ material from your monster, then target one gimmick puppet monster in your graveyard, special submit it to your opponent's, uh, opponent's field in the defense position. STOP GIVING YOUR OPPONENT FREE RESOURCES! FUCK! WHO THOUGHT THIS THROUGH?! Target monsters your opponent controls up to the number of gimmick puppet monsters you control taking- OH! OH! NOW I SEE WHAT THEY'RE DOING! NOW I SEE WHAT THEY'RE DOING! If you control a given puppet monster, except this turn, this card was sent to the graveyard. You can banish this card from your grave with the target. <sighs> this is terrible support. This misses the entire playstyle of gimmick puppets. There are rank eight spam engines. And now you're trying to do this weird board control with them? I'm not seeing a point where you said those monster effects were negated, motherfucker! Cool! You special summon my monster for me? Effect activates because it's special summon. Get to do this, 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 this. On your turn! Thanks for the free resources, jackass! And what's worse is that half these things lock you into the archetype! Guys, a good Yu-Gi-Oh! archetype does not do that! It, it does not lock you in to the archetype. And Gimmick Puppets never really had a problem searching out their shit and changing their levels anyway. Hey boss, just migrated to Twitch from YouTube. I've heard to be go by Sten here. I don't really know why I don't just change my profile on all platforms just to Sten. Oh, okay. But yeah, um... No, the support... It is not what Gimmick Puppets need. 
this is gimmick puppets or rank eight spam and they weren't even good at rate at rank eight spam because there wasn't a lot of good rank eight monsters out there Like, some of the best rank 8s get where, like, other archetypes just do it. Gimmick puppets have to go through fucking hoops and hurdles to do it. And there are some really fucking good rank 8 fucking monsters. There was Din Girsu, the Orc Crust of the Evening Star. There was, um, uh, where is he? Number 38, Hope. There was the new Dracula card. There's Duo Dawn King, which is arguably still Deity's best rank eight. And another problem is, is that it targets. A lot of their shit targets. How many boss monsters or how many monsters or cards in general just... You can't target them. And as I said, if you can't get rid of the cards that you special summoned... To your opponent's side of the field... You're up shit creek without a paddle. Now... Again, they have that trap card, but there's an immediate problem with that. It's a trap card. There are multiple ways to stop a trap card from ever being played, and it can miss timing. But none of those are gimmick puppets, so they don't do gimmick puppet deck. They can summon their own monster and burn you before you get a turn. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. You can only use these effects once per turn. These are a hard once per turn. If a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target one. Destroy it, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half. That... If you get this thing out, you're already in kill range. You don't need it. some uh, Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy effect. You're looking at one monster that needs to be summoned through rank up magic. There's also number 40 and number C40. Once per turn, you detach one, place one string counter in each face of card of the field, except this card if you do during your post next end phase. Destroy monster string counters on and do like that's about max 25k, but most people don't have a full field anymore. So it's like maybe a thousand. And then there's C. But again, I'm telling you. And I need you to focus on this one. Target. How many monsters? Ignore that shit. You are, you are worried about nothing, my friend. You know what makes a Yu-Gi-Oh card stupid? When you can't target it. When it's just immune to effects. And it doesn't give a shit about battle. 
And again, you have to get very hyper-specific spell cards to get these guys out. Which is taking up deck space, which a lot of people don't want to do. These cards are ass. I am FTKing all the damn time. Who the fuck are you playing against, Shadow? Who the fuck are you playing against? Field spell alone is an FTK. This field spell. This what? I think you're missing what a first. Are you talking about a one turn kill? Are you talking about a one turn kill? What are you talking about? The only card in here with a burn effect is the strings guy and fucking Fantix Machina. What the fuck are you talking about? Your opponent doesn't get a turn is what I'm talking- I know what the fuck you're talking about! I'm wondering what- how the hell you're doing anything on the first turn with this deck when they don't have a monster in the graveyard! Are you talking about an OTK after they've done setup? A first turn kill is when you kill on the first turn. All these cards require your opponent to have done something. Which means you didn't have first turn. Are you talking about OTK? Because then that makes sense if you're killing them in one turn. But an OTK is very different from, a, from an FTK. No, on your first turn. How are you summoning shit on my turn, motherfucker? How are you doing this? Break it down for me. Show me. Tell me how it works. I can show you this combo. What card game are we talking about? <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! What the fuck are you talking about, Shadow? <laughs> how are you murdering somebody in turn one? And how does that make this deck any better than what's currently out there? Because right now it's fire, it's snake, it's fucking uh, snake eyes, right? Yeah, current deck is snake eyes. That's like the top tier strategy right now. Kill your anger, rise, my apprentice. It's not even anger. I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? How is that a first turn kill? All these cards require your opponent to have shit in the graveyard. To even function. Otherwise, you just got some pretty weird bodies standing around. I can show you with a screen share. I'm in VC if you want to see. You know what? Yeah. Hold on. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I will be right there, friend. Sup. Sup, okay. Edgy the Hedgy. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Let, let, me, let me get the stream up here. There we go. All okay. right. Show me. I need to see this. Are you talking All FTK right. or are you talking OTK? I am talking FT fucking K on this one, okay? Hold the fuck up. <laughs> I am pull I am pulling the simulator for this, okay? Alright, alright. I am waiting with bated breath. If you can prove if you prove me wrong, awesome. Alright. I am gonna show you with just the field spell alone, okay? Alright. I I wait with bated breath. <laughs> alright. All right, chat, I'm... let's watch this butt-fucking-commence. Activate. All right. Activate. Add, Add a gimmick puppet. Little soldiers. All right. Normal summon little soldiers. Activate little soldiers. Send bloody doll. Bloody doll will then activate. 
Add herself to your hand. Activate Bloody Doll. Reveal Machina. Then summon Cattle Scream. And summon both. Then overlay Machina into its... You, and then detach Cattle Scream. All right. Grabbing Argent Chaos Force. Then activate Argent Chaos Force on Machina. Summoning... Your boy, the, uh, Fantex Machina. Yep. All right. And then it will search out the, the trap card. All right. Then activate Cattle Scream. Detach Machina. Special summon Cattle Scream. All right. If, if, my, if my mouse <laughs> would calm the fuck down. Summon Puppet of Strings. Yep. Since it was XZ Summon, I'll activate Chaos Force at itself to hand. Activate uh, strings, detach cattle scream. Activate and then summon C40. C40 will then trigger. Machina will then trigger. Special summon is to your field. Add the Argent Chaos Force to your hand. Destroy. Then Link summon. Oh, did I miss the part where they can target into... themselves? Yes. Then activate said link. Oh, my brain was thinking they couldn't be targeted. No, no, they can. And then oh. choose not to special summon a gimmick puppet. Oh, that's then where I was fucking summon. Up. Okay. Baby will then activate special summon the bloody doll. Activate little soldiers from your graveyard. Make baby a level eight. Then put giant grinder on the board. Activate the field spell, detach Bloody Doll, summon C40 to your opponent's field, activate Giant Grinder, destroy C40, kill your opponent another 33, activate Argent Chaos Force, summon Machina again, okay. activate Machina, detaching the Giant Grinder, summon C40 to your opponent's board, activate it. And then kill your opponent. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I see. Okay, I see what you mean. I see. I see what you're fucking with. I see it now. There's still a massive problem with this. Hand traps, I know. Not just hand traps. This requires you to go first. If you are not going first, true. you are gonna get blown out of the fucking water. But again, Yu-Gi-Oh has turned into a game of go the fuck first. Actually, this deck is quite really fucking resilient. I don't know how it is, but it really is. Yeah, I missed... I When I read, like, you can't affect anything else, my brain was just like, oh, they can't target themselves. Yes, that was why I was getting heated. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my that's my stupid brain. That's, that's the Yu-Gi-Oh! player in me going, you need to learn to fucking read, kid. <laughs> No, but thanks for showing that to me, man. Thanks for explaining that. You're welcome. There's like a dozen other fucking FTKs. In the There's even one with Disaster Leo. The one with the most impossible win condition I have ever seen. <laughs> Wait three turns and you win. <laughs> no, that's its first form. I, I know, that's its first form. <laughs> but yeah, no, then there's one for its, like, C form, where apparently you can FTK with that one, too. This. chat says and this is why i got out of Yu-Gi-Oh. yeah no the best the best way that i have seen Yu-Gi-Oh described in recent memory was that it is it is like playing a fighting game where you are either the person doing the comboing the person in the corner or you are the person getting comboed in the corner and you're getting looped at the same time exactly that that's what Yu-Gi-Oh has turned into uh, Yu-Gi-Oh can be incredibly rewarding and incredibly fun, but at the same time, it's... There is a massive skill ceiling that a lot of people just can't fucking touch because they're just lost in the sauce. Yeah, but anyway, I'm glad I could show you that combo. Nah, thanks for showing me, man. Appreciate it. Alright. Later. Later. Again, I am always willing to be proven wrong. And again, I, I missed that part. I missed that part. 
Because I thought with the uh, the mansion there, you can't target them, period. So that means they couldn't target themselves. I missed that part. So good to know that I was wrong. <laughs> it no longer a card game. <laughs> wrong. It is a card game. It's just Street Fighter the card game. <laughs> but yeah, no, seeing that... Uh, God, the only way they fixed gimmick puppets was making them a burn engine. That's actually really sad. <laughs> Upon reflection. I... I'm glad that they now have a win condition. Because they originally didn't. Like, their only win condition was Leo originally. And Leo was terrible. But now it's straight up just like, burn. Burn the opponent. Burn them for everything they got. Which... Uh, judging from the character from Zexel that played them, yeah, that actually does make sense. It does make sense that they would be a bird engine. Uh, there is clear, there is very clear problems with the deck, but then again, it comes down to who goes first, does your opponent have a hand trap, uh, has your opponent been able to set up plenty of negates beforehand. It's all very much like, uh, situational and this and that when it comes to that deck but uh nah gimmick, gimmick puppet players seeing that nah you fuckers eating good and i'm happy for you now when dynamis support <laughs> i love dynamists dude this will be the last thing we talk about today but i'm gonna talk about dynamis for a minute i fucking love dynamists i love them so goddamn much and i hate I hate that they are not getting any new support. I I love these little steam engines, dude. I love these stupid little things. This is my favorite deck of all time. And they're garbage. They're trash. Like, steam-powered dinosaur robots. Come on. This was my childhood dream, dude. I love these stupid fucking things. Yubel got more support than Dynamis did. Yeah, but here's the thing. Yubel was in the anime. Dynamis were not. So it's understandable that anime cards are gonna get love way before any other archetype does. And... Dynamists do have a very good strategy in them, but they're also just a rank 4 spam engine. And there is plenty of machine support and water support, but, like, it just... They're so slow, and they're a pendulum deck in the modern day. Like, pendulums right now... Oh, God. It is, it is watching someone drown is how sad it is to watch Pendulums. They, they just can't keep up. It's depressing, dude. I remember when these things were contenders in the meta. But, yeah. I love Dynamists. Uh, love their whole effect style of pendulum scales. I protect my dynamists. Um, I love that they were like a constant loop. Like uh, their dynamist, like their search card was a permanent spell card. And every time a dynamis pendulum monster got destroyed and sent face up to the extra deck, you could add it back to hand. Um, the major problems with dynamists, though, is that A, they're slow. B, their effects are very bland, generic, and target. Um, ever since Pendulum Scales got moved from, like, the sides to the Spell and Trap card zone, it has been a fucking fight for what Spell and Trap cards you want to have down there. Especially since, like, you know, you still want to be playing other spell cards... So that way you can do shit. You can play Yu-Gi-Oh! But, uh, all in all... 
I would love Dynamis to get support. I would love to see them uh, get some love. They did get like their own uh, thing in Master Duel, but it wasn't enough. And they're only really remembered for being a Plessio spam engine. Because uh, the winning strategy with them was that you made a rank 4 monster that could destroy monsters whose attack points weren't their original. And you just had like three Plessioses out in the field. So... Bad, it's a bad day. Bad day. But, either way, um, thank you all for coming tonight. Very much appreciated. A nice, chill stream. I know, like, people were like, oh my god, he finally got heated! I didn't. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like, no, I need you to show me. I need you to show me or explain what the hell you're talking about. Because, like, my brain, my brain's not making it connect. But, uh, thank you. Thanks again, Shadow, for showing me. Um. <laughs> very much appreciate it. Uh. <laughs> and we will be back on Wednesday. I don't know what we'll be playing on Wednesday. But, uh, yeah. I will talk to you all on Wednesday. Good night, everybody. And don't forget to go give Laz 